In this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of some plotting commands. I've already read some data into a data frame called edu.df, and uh, we're going to just plot various aspects of this data frame and show you how to get R to produce some some nice plots that uh, that we can put into a nice report. Here are some basic plotting commands, and we can look at these one by one. So if we were to just plot the data frame, so just use the plot function and use the data frame as the argument, let's see what happens there and see kind of what that gives us. So this is kind of an interesting plot, and here I'm going to make this big. If you make it big, it'll stretch it out. Uh, it'll have the full have the full screen there. So we have our whole plotting object here, and it looks like it's giving us panes of scatter plots that relate each of the variables in our data frame to one another. Now, if you have a hundred variables, they're going. This is going to be a hundred by hundred matrix of plots. So that's going to be maybe a little bit too big. There are some interesting relationships in this data frame. You can kind of get a sense for that uh, just at a glance. It's sort of nice to see this. I wouldn't recommend using this on too big of a data frame, but if you have a set of five or six variables, uh, you can put all those in a data frame and, and produce a nice plot like this. So that's, uh, so that's just using plot on a data frame. Now what if we use plot on one of the variables in the data frame? Let's take a look at this. So what it's doing here is it's plotting the, on the y-axis, it's plotting the value of the variable, and on the x-axis it's plotting the observation number. So this is sort of a strange default. You'd think that plot would give you a histogram, uh, but in fact it does not. If what you really wanted was the histogram of wage, uh, we could uh, we we could go ahead and plot that using hist instead of plot. So let's plot that, and you can see we get kind of a frequency histogram of wage. Uh, the horizontal axis is wage, the vertical axis is frequency, and it gives us kind of a nice plot. Uh, gives us a sense for what the variable looks like, uh, what, what type of distribution this might have come from. Looks like it might have come from an exponential. Now, what if we want to plot two variables in our data frame, not the whole data frame, but just two variables? Let's do this plot here. So this works for if we have two vectors of the same length. Plot will plot this one as our x variable and this one as our y variable. You can see that that's what happened. The, these are sort of the basic plots that I use all the time. I use the histogram plot, uh, the data frame plot, and the scatter plot uh, to, uh, to do most of my diagnostics. So let's do an application. So the application is going to be, uh, let's first run a regression using the LM command. We're going to run a regression log wage on education, parents' education, experience, and gender. Use the data from this data frame. And then I'm going to create a couple of different variables that I'd be interested in plotting against one another. In particular, I'm going to use the residuals command to get the, a vector of residuals for each of my observations. I'm going to use the fitted command to get a vector of fitted values for each of my observations. So it's often uh, something that we'll want to do to plot uh, residuals versus our fitted values. Residuals is on the y-axis, fitted is on the x-axis. If you ever switch it, it'll kind of look sort of funny. Um, so let's go ahead and plot that. So now we have some residuals versus fitted values here. Uh, this is, uh, so we have a plot of our residuals versus our fitted values. Uh, looks like maybe in the upper side here, there's some evidence of heteroscedasticity. Uh, we might want to correct for that. Um, looks kind of, kind of strange, actually. And we've got a, kind of a big fitted value out here. It might have a lot of influence on our estimator. So, so the key thing about this plot that we want to add is we want to have some nice labels here. Let's say we want to actually say residuals, and we want to say fitted values. And we might even want a title on this. 
we can we can beautify the plot using various uh, beautification techniques afforded to us by R. There are arguments x lab and y lab, and what you do is you set them equal to things between quotes. So this is going to produce a little bit nicer plot. Notice it says fitted values here and residuals here. Let's say I just wanted to plot the male once. So what I'm doing here is I'm treating f and r as, uh, as vectors. And what I'm doing is I'm referencing the rows uh, of that vector such that uh, the variable gender equals male. So this should give us a plot of fitted versus, uh, versus residuals, or residuals versus fitted for just the males. So let's see what happens there. So it looks a little bit, uh, little bit sparser there. Uh, so uh, I'm suspecting that that's what ended up happened, uh, happening. Um, and let's say I want to beautify this a little bit. I can copy those labels. And now this is going to give us kind of a nicer looking plot. So fitted values, residuals, and this is for the males. Let's make a, a plot for the female. And I want to introduce you to the plot character command. Let's say I want my plotting character to be a plus sign for the males. Uh, we'll, we'll get down to that second plotting command soon. Well, there we go. PCH, if you specify PCH equals something, that's going to give you a plotting character that looks like that. So if I wanted to, I could have my plotting character be the string Tony. Uh, it's going to be an ugly looking plot. Uh, it looks like it just puts T. It, it understands it would be really ugly looking. So, uh, so it just took the first letter there. Uh, so you, you can plot using T's. So maybe instead, let's make these M's because they're males. So we get a whole bunch of M's there. You think the M's are a little bit too big. CEX gives you the size, uh, relative size of, of your plotting character. Here I just shrunk them down by 50%. So now at each point, instead of an M of regular size, now they're M's that are 50% the, of what they used to be. Let's, let's make them 75% the regular size and plot them. And so now, now we've got a bunch of M's, M's wherever our uh, residuals and fitted values for males actually end up being. It'd be really great if we could do this, where we could sort of run this plot, and then run this plotting command, and then get uh, females on top of the males, and have males and females It'd be sort of a three-dimensional plot. We'd be able to see where the residuals are for the females, where the residuals are for the males, and we'd be able to compare that. So let's run this and see what happens. Well, unfortunately, once we run that, we erased the male plot, and now all we have are female, um, female plotting characters here. So unfortunately, when you run a plotting command, if there's already a plot there, it's not going to put those plotting points on top of the plot that you already had. What it's going to do is it's going to generate a new plot, and you're not going to add to the original plot. Here's how you do that. Instead of using plot, use points. If what you want to do is you want to plot points on, on the graph. So first, let's generate the plot with the male residuals and fitted values. There are the male residuals and fitted values. Now let's run this points command. We'll see what ends up happening. If we run the points command, you can see we've got some F's in here. We've got some M's in here. And it's a little bit hard to tell them apart. Um, I mean, they are different color. They they aren't different colors, but they're different characters. You can kind of get a little bit of a sense for what's going on. But sometimes colors will help us separate things. And sure enough, we can also do colors. So let's uh, let's make males and blue. Let's make females red. So those are our colors. Now we'll just run this plot and then points command and see what comes out about that. 
So we ran the plot and points command. Now this gives us actually a pretty good sense for how males and females differ as, as how we were able to fit them in the model here. Maybe the females have lower average fitted values. That's, I think that's what comes out in the regression. And you can see that there's not really much systematic different about females and males in terms of how the residuals and fitted values relate to one another. But it's, it's an interesting plot nonetheless. So using these colors, using the plot size, plot character size command, the CEX, plot characters, uh, makes, makes the graph look quite a bit nicer. So suppose we do all this work and we want to have a title. We can use the title command. And if there's an active plot window, it's going to put a title on that, uh, on that plot. So here's, here's a nice descriptive title, and let's go ahead and run that and see what ends up happening there. So re residuals versus fitted by gender. And this is, a, this is a plot that you might actually see in, in a report. So, so there's, there's a, nice, uh, a nice application of uh, basic plotting commands in R.